YouTube Official Gaming Network and welcome to episode 8 of our Mario game in Java tutorial. Last episode we created a frames per second and an updates or ticks per second timer. This episode we're going to be filling in our public void render method with uh, creating buffer strategies, our graphics object and we're going to actually uh, fill in our frame. So as you know right now if we go ahead and run the game, you'll see that the colour of our frame is kind of this light grey and by the end of the episode you should be able to colour uh, this frame whatever you want. Alright, so I'm just going to dive right into it by creating buffer strategies. Now to explain what a buffer strategy is, I'm going to actually, I've actually opened up a, a GIMP file, sort of like a new thing. And uh, yeah, I'm just going to show you. Excuse my rubbish drawings, okay? So let's say that this is our screen. And of course, the, at the end of this tutorial, there's going to be a lot of things being rendered. There's like coins, player, enemies, and yeah. And there's loads of things being rendered onto the screen. And uh, what pretty much what buffer strategies do is is the images they get they go onto the buffer strategy and the buffer strategy gets ready to put these images onto the screen and uh, we're actually going to create three buffer strategies so I'm just going to draw another three so the last the last buffer strategy uh, gets ready to put images onto the second buffer strategy and then that gets ready to put images onto the first buffer strategy which will get ready to put images onto the screen when needed alright so we're now we're going to create a buffer strategy so in our public void render we're going to type buffer strategy and we're going to call it BS for buffer strategy and uh, if you're not that experienced with Java you might think BS is going to equal to a new a new buffer strategy but no we're actually going to do something different buffer strategy BS is equal to get buffer strategy which is pretty much getting a buffer strategy now of course our buffer strategy is getting the buffer strategy but right now it's getting the buffer strategy but right now it's not actually creating it so we need to create three buffer strategies like I did in our uh, image the thing I drew <laughs> so we're going to type if BS is equal to null which it will be at the moment because we haven't created buffer strategies we're going to type create buffer strategy and in these brackets we're going to put how many buffer strategies we want and because we want three we'll type three and then we're going to return alright so now we're going to actually create our graphics object so we'll type graphics, I'm going to call it G. Uh, we're not going to set it to new graphics, it's going to be different like buffer strategy BS is equals get buffer strategy. We're going to type graphics G is equal to BS dot get draw graphics. Right, so we're kind of linking our graphics object to our buffer strategies, which is what we want. Now this is the fun part because we're going to actually set the colour of what colour we want our frame to be. So we're going to type G dot set color. Now there's different colors. You can type color dot blue. There's color dot red. Color dot magenta, and of course, which is magenta is my favorite color. So remember, we need to import magenta. So we'll use this for now. And by the way, because there's only sort of like 15 sort of color dot red color dot blue these sort of things there's only 15 of them uh, we can actually set a color of an RBG value or red green blue so we can just type is equal to a new color then we can enter our RBG values uh, here and just enter a random one 97 right then we're going to go 
g dot fill rects which will pretty much uh, fill a rectangle and uh, to create that rectangle we need to specify the points so it's going to be the starting x and the starting y then we're going to have our width and height and because we want to color our whole screen we can type 0 0 and then uh, we and uh, to uh, pretty much get the whole width of our frame we're going to type get width remember to put brackets then get height now if we run it you can see that our frame isn't being colored and you're wondering why it's because uh, we've sort of created it but we haven't really shown it so to show our graphics we want to do g dot dispose which pretty much disposes what has been created which is here onto our buffer strategy but we have it and to make our buffer strategies pretty much show it onto the screen we want to type bs dot show so now if we run it and there we go we get this kind of a dark purple screen and uh, if we close it then type uh, different uh, RGB values let's type 165 uh, we'll type 9 and 222 <laughs> okay and we'll run it now you can see we get uh, we get pretty much the a different color every time we can we can still do uh, things like color dot blue and then we'll work just fine All right, and there we go so uh, I'm just gonna show you a little uh, fun thing you can do before you wrap up this episode you don't have to fill the whole screen blue you can say uh, you want the background to be blue but then you want a rectangle in the middle to be red so I'm gonna show you how to do that so so we're going to type g dot set color again and we're going to set the color for another rectangle we'll make it red whoops we'll type color dot red oh horrible typing today All right then we can go come on all right then we can go g dot fill rect uh, then we can type a hundred a hundred actually we'll type 200 200 oh this way all right then we'll type then we should type get width minus 400 then get height minus 400 all right and uh, that should work and there we go, I'm going to wrap up this episode here. If you enjoyed, leave a like, comment and subscribe and stay tuned for more videos. Uh, next episode will be episode 9. I haven't actually decided what we're going to do that episode, but you'll see. Okay, stay tuned for more. Bye.